Hello all, myself Dr. Nimai Mishra, currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry at SRM University AP Andhra Pradesh, which is located in Vijayawada uh, in India. So the primary focus of my research group is uh, colloidal semiconductor nanocrystals, studying from their synthesis, understanding their optoelectric properties, as well as use them for optoelectric devices. So recently we have uh, published uh, one JPC letter perspective, which is entitled Amine Free Synthetic Route, an emerging approach to making high quality perovskite nanocrystal for futuristic applications. We have a high demand for a good quality uh, optoelectronic devices. For that, we need a very cheap cheap, high efficient optoelectronic material to support this supply chain. Now what are the good optoelectronic materials? So the optoelectronic materials which should have very good absorbance and like broad absorbance, it should have narrow emission in terms of making them LED devices. On the other hand, it should have a low exciton binding energies if you want to use them uh, or long diffusion length if you want to use them for solar cell devices. So preboscite nanocrystals or preboscite materials are one of such material that actually forefront of research in recent times that uh, you know will be very useful for several applications starting from solar cell leds and even people have been using them photocatalysis now uh, as i said my research group are focusing on colloidal semiconductor nanocrystals their optimistic properties and devices to be specific my group are focused on preboscite nanocrystals understanding their optical properties again to be more details, we try to understand or try to make them stable in different conditions and use them for different applications. So as I said, preboscites has been there for quite a long time. Uh, but very recently, in 2015, this material has been synthesized in the nanoscale regime and thus opens up a new area of research for all semiconductor nanocrystal research community. And then people have been trying to understand their optical properties and use them uh, for LEDs and so on uh, applications. Now this purpose guides with a is come with a uh, you know uh, you know stoichiometric formula ABX3 where A stands for a monovalent cation where B stands for a bivalent cation and X stands for halide ions and this material can be found either in inorganic form or completely inorganic form or it can be a hybrid inorganic organic peboscite nanocrystals so my group we are focusing on completely inorganic based peboscite nanocrystals and if you see these materials which have can be synthesized as simple like you know hot injection colloidal method that have been people doing for other conventional quantum dots and this material as I mentioned before uh, you can see here they have a very broad absorbance and they have very narrow emission apart from them what are the most interesting interesting point uh, you know of this material that we can able to tune their optical properties by simply changing the halide ions okay so these are all about their synthesis and unique optical properties but they have a very good intrinsic uh, interesting property which is called defect tolerant compared to the conventional semiconductor nanocrystals that makes this material quite unique compared to the conventional cadmium chalconazide you know zinc chalconazide based uh, uh, you know uh, semiconductor nanocrystals hi i'm Syed akhil what year phd student in terms of colloidal synthesis of a cesium red halide perovskite nanocrystal Lead halide as used as a both the source of lead and halide and cesium oled as cesium precursor. We know that the cesium surface cap ligands are playing a key role in the terms of playing a crystal growth of up to a nano domain. So here the most commonly used surface capping ligands are oled amine and oleic acid. From the literature, the researchers found that these uh, both oleic acid and oled amine are playing having the dynamic equilibrium of protonation and deprotonation nature where this amine is a basic in nature, gets the proton from the oleic acid, which is getting from the uh, proton from oleic acid and uh, forms the oleal ammonium, which makes this oleal ammonium takes the halide from the surface of the perovskite nanocrystal and uh, uh, forms the oleal ammonium halide salt. This causes the deficient, uh, halide deficient on the surface of perovskite nanocrystal. Thus, we can say this causes a degradation of photonesis point of yield or for optical properties. So amine is a problem in this case. To eliminate amine is a quite challenging. It's not only the surface capping ligand, it is also useful to dissolve the lead halide in the reaction condition or in the reaction mixture. So we have chosen trioctyl phosphine to replacing the in the place of oleal amine. Also, we have taken this three precursor root approach where these three independent cesium, lead and halide sources are used. In conclusion, amine is creating the problem. To overcome this problem, we have 
replaced olelamine with the troctyl phosphine so in this process we have synthesized a completely amine free synthesis using the troctyl phosphine as surface capping ligand we have stopped this uh, dynamic equilibrium between the two surface capping ligand with this we have synthesized this uh, completely amine free highly stable cesium lead bromide pyrazine nanocrystals hi i am shubhanu vishesh research scholar chemistry srm university so as the halide deficiency introduced by the amines are the root cause of their degradation of the optoelectron properties of uh, pyrazine nanocrystals it is uh, desirable to make its environment halide rich so to do that in order to do that we have introduced the facile bromine facile halide source more specifically the bromine one bromine source uh, like uh, hydrobromic acid and different alkyl halides like bromooctane and bromopropane which uh, release ample amount of bromine in the reaction conditions and thus make its environment halide rich and thus uh, it restores its optoelectronic properties i am manoj palabotni first year phd student so far from the literature these conventional amine based pyrazine nanocrystal often suffers from the stability in ambient conditions due to very high reactive surface the resulting amine free pyrazine nanocrystals are more stable in both colloidal solution and also in thin films even more the amine free based pyrazine nanocrystals are more stable in harsh conditions like uv radiation methanol treatment and water treatment all these together makes these amine free pyrazine nanocrystals suitable for realistic optoelectronic applications hello i am rahul singh third year phd student so the focus of our group to use the amine free perovskite material in the down conversion led and photocatalyst applications especially in the photocatalysis charge transfer playing a important role uh, that's why we conducted photo induced electron uh, electron hole transfer study uh, by using uh, two organic molecule benzoketone and phenothiazine interestingly this material exhibit high charge transfer in the terms of electron and hole compared to amine based perovskite material so now we are exploring this material in the organic photocatalysis as well as in the uh, photovoltaic applications in conclusion in this journal of physical chemistry letter perspective we have summarized different kind of synthetic approaches that are available till date in order to synthesize high quality perovskite nanocrystals not only that we also highlighted that stability aspects of this amine free nanocrystals in compared to the amine counterpart in different kind of conditions at the end of this perspective we also summarize that how this amine free perovskite nanocrystals could be useful in different optoelectronic devices starting from leds uh, to photocatalytic reactions